Hi, this is Tyan from Cooking with Tyan, and you are listening to the Eat Blog Talk podcast. Hey, awesome food bloggers. Before we dig into this episode, I have a really quick favor to ask you. Go to your favorite podcast player, go to Eat Blog Talk, scroll down to the bottom where you see the ratings and review section. Leave Eat Blog Talk a five star rating if you love this podcast and leave a great review. This will only benefit this podcast, it adds value. And I so very much appreciate your efforts with this. Thank you so much for doing this. Okay, now on to the episode. Hey, food bloggers. Welcome to Eat Blog Talk, the podcast for food bloggers looking for the value and competence that will move the needle forward in their businesses. This episode is sponsored by Rank IQ. I am your host, Megan Porta, and you are listening to episode number 343. I have Tyann Johnson with me today. I am going to ask her all about her story with self-publishing a cookbook in 45 days. Super excited to chat with her about that and have her share her knowledge with all of us about how to do that. Tyann has been a food blogger for two and a half years at Cooking with Tyann. She began her blog on the platform Wix. A year ago, she made the switch to WordPress. Tyann wrote and published a cookbook in under 45 days right after graduating from college last year. So impressive. I'm super excited to hear your story, Tyann. But first, you have a fun fact to share with us. Yeah, my fun fact is that I have a pet cow named Goat who is 11 years old now. Okay, wait, what? <laughs> you have a pet cow and you call him Goat yep. or her? Yep, it's a her. Yeah, she was it's, really small. She's 11? Yep, she's okay. 11 now. Yep, her only purpose in life is to make me happy. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Is she your only cow? Yep. I, I guess we have. she has two friends, but she's our only like actual pet cow. Oh, I love this. And why did you decide to call her goat? When we brought her home from a sale barn, she just looked really small. And my first thought was goat. And <laughs> it stuck ever since. I love it. How long did cow? What's the lifespan of a cow? So she's our oldest cow right now. We have had some live to be like 15, 16 ish. But so far, she's doing pretty well. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, tell Goat hello from eBlog Talk audience. I will. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm super excited to hear about your story, Tyann, because you just like made this decision that you needed to self-publish a cookbook and you did it in 45 days, which is extremely impressive and ambitious. So I want to hear, and everybody else wants to hear, what prompted you, I guess, to take on this project in the first place? So last year, I moved from Wix to WordPress and, you know, it takes a really long time to like generate traffic and to like get into an ad network. So I thought graduation's approaching, trying to get a job right now is very difficult. So I thought I should make a product to go with my website. And throughout college, I would make my parents freezer meals so they got, they could have something to eat when I wasn't cooking for them at home. And when both my parents absolutely hate cooking. So it's very ironic they have me for a child. <laughs> <laughs> then I figured I should make a freezer meal cookbook because I have all these freezer meal recipes I make for my parents. And I know it freezes well. I had all the research already on how to freeze it. So I decided that that is what I should do after graduation. Okay, so that's super ambitious. And had you ever published anything prior to that? No, I took a week after graduation to figure out how I was going to self-publish it, and away I went. Wow. Where did you go first to research this? Well, I went to Google, and I put in how to self-publish a cookbook, and there's actually not a lot of information on how to do it self-published wise as opposed to using like a traditional publisher, and then I looked at how to publish a regular book, like say if it was like fiction or nonfiction. And I read published by Chandler Bolt on how to actually get it written and then different launching ideas with his book. And I also enrolled in the self-publishing school webinar. Those are all really great resources on self-publishing. Nice. Okay. So you had freezer meals as a topic because you had a database of these recipes and you knew they worked. Did you know that this is something that your audience wanted or did you have to do a little digging to figure that out? Yeah, 
So one of the things I found while researching was that before starting a huge project is to always survey the audience just to make sure that whatever product you're going to make, there is a need for it. I did a survey on my Instagram and I had people fill out a questionnaire regarding whether they wanted a book in ebook, hard copy, if they're interested in both, different pain points they had while cooking, and how much they were willing to pay for a product that, like a cookbook. And that's kind of how I gauge my pricing. And then you took all of that information and made sure to include it in your book. Okay, so you did self publish a printed version, correct? Or did you do both ebook and I did both. Hard copy? Okay, interesting. So which one do you feel like did better? Which one did people want more? Honestly, the hard copy, which actually really surprised me. I feel like a lot of people do like the ebooks, then when they see like a hard copy, they're like, oh, you know. And it's a lot easier for me to sell a hard copy in person. I do a lot of book signings throughout the summer and over Christmas I did some. And it's a lot more able to promote when you have both, I think. Yeah, I've heard that too from people who do both, that they're always surprised when people want the hard copy over the ebook because they don't necessarily go in expecting that. So that's really interesting. Okay, so what was your next step? So you figured out a topic, you surveyed your audience, you kind of got some details hashed out. Then what did you do next? I created a deadline and a schedule on how I was going to meet the deadline. I was going to give myself about 30 days to write it and publish it. It ended up taking a little bit longer because I didn't know how much time to account for the administrative side of things on the Amazon KDP website. And then I created a schedule. And with the schedule, I didn't really stick to the schedule as well as I should have. But I think it's great to always have like a schedule so at least you know where you're going and what else you have to do to get there. 30 days is quick for a cookbook. How many recipes did you include in the book? So I included over 30 recipes. My goal was to get in 50 recipes, but I started with a different publisher first called Blurb. And Blurb was charging a lot of money for the color. So I started to like cut it down because it got to be really pricey. And in the end, I ended up switching to Amazon KDP because I didn't like the way that the colors looked on Blurb. Okay. So in the end, if I would have started with the right publisher, I would have had over 50 recipes. And what do you feel like the options, the good options are for self-publishers? So it would be KDP, Blurb. Are there any other options out there that you considered? I don't think so. I was really stuck between Amazon and Blurb. The only reason I chose Blurb to begin with was that they have a app you can like download to your computer and they had like a cookbook template and that's what I used. And that was like really nice because then it was basically all set up for me and everything already said ingredients and directions and had like a title. And I didn't have to do a lot of self-making of a template as I would have if I would have started with Amazon first. So you wish you would have, if you could go back, you wish you would have started with Amazon first. Oh, yes, definitely. (laughs) Okay. Are there any additional reasons why you would choose Amazon over Blurb? I think the color quality is really great on Amazon. Like with Blurb, it was going to cost me about $15 a book for the color. And then Amazon, it only cost me like $4 for the color per book. And that's a huge difference. And the Amazon colors look really good. And I get a lot of compliments for my picture quality. That's awesome. So you figured out your publisher and then you had a schedule. So you had 30-ish recipes in 30 days. So that meant you had to create 30 or one recipe a day, correct? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I had most of them pre-made, but then like some of them I did make in those 30 days. I probably made 20 of the recipes in the 30 days. And I would... That is so awesome. (laughs) Yeah. As I created, I would just put it in the app and away I went. (laughs) That's super impressive. So you were really determined to do this. Do you feel like it stretched you? Was it doable? Would you do it again? Do you recommend that tight of a schedule for others? No, I definitely don't recommend that tight of a schedule. (laughs) It was mostly 14-hour days or a month. 
Oh my goodness. Oh yeah. man, that's crazy. Were you burnt out at the end? Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah. But like towards the end though, you kind of got, it kind of slows down with waiting to hear back from Amazon and then you can kind of relax a little bit before it's like ready to go for the launch and promotion. Right. So really, I mean, even if you extended this by, you know, another 45 days. So if you made it 90 days and did the same amount of recipes, that would be a lot less stressful, yes, right? But that's still like stressful. a really great turnaround. 90 days is still great. It is, yeah. Okay, so you had an ambitious schedule, not recommended, but you did it. You got it done. So what did you do after you decided on your platform and you had your schedule set? After that, I started to put everything into the app. I had everything written on my computer of how one of the categories to go. Like it starts with chicken, then it moves to beef, then pork, and then it goes to like soups and pastas. And then I put everything in the app and then I upload all the pictures and I had to run all my pictures through the Adobe Lightroom to make sure everything looked good. And then I color coordinated each category with little triangles on the sides. So I had to line up all the triangles to make sure it looked cohesive when you flipped the route. So you did like page layout. You did everything. So you I did yes. the pages. And how did you know to do that coordinating thing? I never would have thought of that. Part of the template kind of had some sort of key indicator that looked a little bit different. So I changed it to a triangle. And then therefore, you always know where you're at in the book. That is so cool. I never would have thought of that. That's a great idea. So where did you go from there after you kind of got layout done and you did your own editing, correct? Yes, I did have a couple of people I know also check through and make sure everything looked good. Just because, you know, after you do it so long with your own eyes, after a while, it starts to all blend together. And it's always good to have a fresh set of eyes. Yeah, absolutely. That's why, like, even traditionally published books, they go through rigorous editing, you know, with so many different people, including the author, and they still, all the time, they miss things because of that same reason. Like, if you're looking at something over and over and over, you're just going to, it's almost like your eyes get used to it and you're just going to miss stuff. So it's such a good idea if you're self-publishing, I think, to have, what do you think, like at least two other people look at it? Oh, yeah, I'd say at least like five. Because part of having the launch team in the beginning or like the people to help you out that are like the closest people around you that you know is to have them go through and like edit it and like give you pointers about what you can add or take out or so you say launch team who was part of your launch team and what did they do so how I gathered my launch team was that I posted it to my Instagram if you're interested in helping me out with this cookbook fill out this application Um, most people who applied were the people closest to me and a couple of people from Canada actually who applied to be part of my launch team they were just my followers and they were able to give me feedback on the inside and contents of the book, but they also helped with the cover and some promotional ideas as well. That's such a great idea. Where did you get that idea from to reach out to your followers? Part of the book published by Chandler Bolt mentions yeah. it. And then part of the BC Stack blogging group last year, part of that group had a publishing course. And one of the people were relaunching her book. And I was on her launch team, so it was helpful to like know how a launch team oh, works. Yeah, that's cool. Do you feel like they did a good job? Did they were they dedicated? Did they pull through with everything you expected? I'd say about seventy five percent of them pulled through, and other people didn't help out as much as I would have hoped to have. But that's kind of why you have a bit larger group because some people have things come up and they can't help as much. So the more people you have on your team, the better. And what did they get from it aside from just, you know, having that satisfaction of helping you with a big project? Did you pay them? What did you give them in return? I'm just curious. So they got a free copy of the book and then their name's actually in the book too in the end of the acknowledgments that they helped. Okay, so editing, you got help with that. And how long did editing take for you? Was that a big ordeal? I think I allocated about a week, but... 
I wish it would have allocated more looking back now. But overall, even though I did it in a week with the help of others, it still turned out pretty good considering I only gave myself a week. Yeah, that's a short time frame. But I'm just so impressed that you did all of this in such a short time frame. This is like unheard of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And what is, I haven't even asked you what your cookbook is called. I'm assuming like it's published and it's awesome and doing well. How's it doing? It's called Deliciously Fresh Freezer Meals, and it's doing pretty well. I have been traveling over the summer doing some events, book signing, and you know, promotional things online. I'm assuming since it was through KDP that it's on Amazon. Is it pretty much everywhere books are sold, or is it just Amazon? No, I actually uploaded it to Ingram Spark as well. So it's also there too, and then with Ingram Spark, they put it in bookstores. Are you happy with it? How do you feel like it turned out? Is there anything that you're like, oh, I wish I would have added 20 more recipes or redid that photograph or any little detail that you wish you would have done differently? Overall, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. And, you know, seeing people walk by my booth when I'm selling it places and them complimenting it and them buying it, saying, you know, like giving it for a gift for a loved one. It's a really great feeling because, you know, I put in a lot of 14-hour days on end to accomplish it. So it's, it's a really rewarding to have accomplished in the end. I do wish that it would have a couple more recipes, but other than that, I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out considering it was done in such a short amount of time. And I feel like freezer meals are so helpful for people. Like, I think older people and I think people wanting to help out, I don't know, a couple who just had a baby and who needs extra meals. And, you know, they're just like, for me, when I think of freezer meals, it's like support and lending a hand to people who need it. So I think that is in your favor. It's a really great topic, honestly. And I'm curious about the feedback you've gotten. So from your audience and people who have purchased it, what kind of feedback have they given you? There's a lot of fan favorites. Like a lot of people really enjoy the bacon wrap meatloaf recipe. And a lot of people also compliment like the pictures and a lot of the pasta recipes. Those are all my favorite. Another fan favorite is the hamburger recipe. You know, it's not a plain Jane hamburger. You know, being a food blogger, you always got to spice things up a bit. And I feel like a lot of people just throw some salt and pepper on their hamburgers. And so I try to make the recipe as spicy as possible. Oh, yummy. That sounds amazing. I'm starving. Okay, I just purchased a copy of your Oh, really? Book. Thank you. <laughs> I'm excited to get it. I think, like, we make freezer meals for that reason that I mentioned earlier. Like, if somebody needs something, we throw a freezer meal together and we don't always know what to make. So I think this is going to be really helpful. So thank you. Yes, thank you. Let's take a quick break to talk about the Eat Blog Talk Mastermind program, Food Bloggers. If you are looking for a supportive group of peers to hold you accountable in 2023 so you can level up, this program is for you. By joining the Eat Blog Talk Mastermind program, you will accomplish more in 12 months than you would in over five years when relying on your own efforts. You will find clarity on projects and you'll expand your network of peers, which will open up tons of opportunity for you and your business. Also, you will get firsthand access to relevant trends and information that will stop your wheels from spinning once and for all. Secure your spot now in order to lock in at the current pricing. You will also get your 90-minute planning session now with me so you have a solid plan for your business heading into Q4. And you'll be able to attend all monthly guest expert sessions for the remainder of 2022. To get in on all this value, go to eatblogtalk.com forward slash mastermind. Again, eatblogtalk.com forward slash mastermind. And the rest of us cannot wait to have you in the group. Now back to the episode. I have a question about the cover. Did you design the cover? Did you hire someone else to? Your cover is really beautiful. I'm assuming Thank you. that's a picture of you on the cover. It is, yes. Okay. Yeah. So tell us about that. Yeah. Last May, when uh, Google did the Google Core update, I needed to have some website things done. So I reached out to a Facebook group and somebody commented and he helped me out with some blogging aspects. And then he happened to also go to school for graphic design. So he was more than willing to do the cover. The cover is actually made in India. 
Oh. Yeah, my mom took a picture of me outside, and there actually isn't syrup coming out of the cup. He added that part in. What? Okay, so that picture is of you standing outside, and that's just like a green screen background of sorts? Yeah, he put me in a kitchen somehow. Oh my gosh, that is so funny and amazing. Wow, that, I'm so impressed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he, he thought of the phrase, meals that save the day. Whatever I wanted before, he said, well, what about freezer meals that save the day? Because at the end of the day, your meals are to save someone's day when they don't have time to cook. Mm -hmm. I thought that was really genius of him to think of that. And that's why that's that's the slogan is. Yeah, that's perfect. Just what I was saying earlier, right? Like you're saving someone else. So you are saving the day. And most of the time you need a meal like last minute. So it's like, oh, that saved my day. (laughs) It's kind of a perfect phrase for it. Are you happy with the cover? Yes, I really like the cover. It turned out better than anything I could have done by myself. And he was really good about taking suggestions and critiques. And he made it like in front of my own eyes on the computer over Google Meet, I think is what it's called. My whole family was there too to say, oh, no, I think like the letters need to be moved here. Like, what about this background? It was really cool to like see it come to life. You really did make this a team project, and it sounds like you have a great network of people surrounding you. You included your family and your launch team and people to really support you in every step of the process, which is super smart because you don't want to do something like this alone, right? Yeah, yeah. You definitely have to have a good support system, you know, working long hours to get it done. Like, you have to, like, have someone continuously backing you up to keep make you keep going and not give up. I love that. So once you had everything edited and you had a cover, then I don't know how this works. So with self-publishing, do you, like, what do you do with all of that? Where does it go from there? So once you have everything done, then you have to upload it to Amazon. I uploaded using the KF8 format. And then with that, then you can order a book to send to yourself so you can see what it looks like and go through one more time of editing. And then once Amazon approves it and you like it, then you can hit publish. And then it's all instantly published, I think. And then anybody can buy it from there and you can promote it. Did you have moments where you were like, I mean, I should go through it again. I should have someone else look through this. Did you have doubtful questioning moments? Yeah, I did. You know, because you always think, what if I miss something on this one page? Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't spend as much time on that page. But... As the book published by Chandler Bolt says, he said that nothing's ever going to be 100% perfect and just getting it done is an accomplishment in itself. Oh my gosh, that's so true. Just putting it out there is such a message, I think, to the world. Like you did it, you published it. Of course, it's not going to be perfect. I have to tell you, I traditionally published a cookbook and I mean, there were so many eyeballs on it. A week after it was published, my sister called me and she was like, Megan, I was going to make your banana cream pie cookies, but there's nothing banana flavored in the recipe. And my heart just sank. I was like, what? No, this can't be right. So I rushed to my coffee and read through it. And the so I used like a pudding mix and it's supposed to be banana cream or banana cream pie flavor. Well, somehow we changed it to vanilla. And then there was like something else banana in the recipe that got changed to vanilla so yeah that was like a huge so nothing is going to be perfect and you just have to roll with it right like if you do find a mistake which you will you just have to accept that mistake and you have to accept that people are going to forgive you and have grace like oh well that must be her mistake (laughs) so I agree you just have to put it out there do your best put it out there learn your lesson and then if like the good thing about self-publishing is that in reprints you can fix it right yeah you can fix it in reprints because I published on blurb though I'd have to pay like per page to get it like resized to Amazon after the first time because Amazon forgave me after so because oh. of the first time so everything is like still the same as it is a year ago okay but you I mean you could go back potentially yes and do I that could without, yeah. like For mine, it was like, okay, you have to sell, I don't know, 10,000 copies and then we can... Oh my. No, then we can... I don't know if it was exactly 10,000, but it was like, you have to sell all these and then we can change it. So 
like, well, okay, here's the change after that many copies. But it was a little disheartening. But you just have to roll the punches like like everything else. Yeah. Yeah, you do. Because, I mean, then you like look at like other books that you read and you're like, oh, there's also like a mistake there too. Like Totally. And like really well-known books of people who publish a lot of really high-end material. And there's always mistakes everywhere. So... Yes, Tons yep. of grace, I think, from readers. And have you done like outreach to get reviews and ratings and all of that? Yes. I had my launch team review at first since they all had a copy. And then I promoted on Facebook and Instagram. Hey, if you buy a copy, I'd really appreciate it if you li- would leave a review. Amazon's pretty good about emailing people for reviews anyways. So I do get a lot from there too. And then on um, book signings, I always try to say, you know, if you like it, let me know how you like it in the Amazon review. Yeah, that's smart. So you talked about book signings. Tell us more about how you promoted it. So once it was published, did you wait to promote it or did you start promoting beforehand or how did that all work out? I did some promoting beforehand, you know, getting people ready on Instagram to buy the book, you know, talking about how I wrote the book and such. And then after you know it was made, then I really promoted like every day on Instagram, every day on Facebook for a while. And then once it got to be closer to Christmas, then I did a couple book signings in my hometown. And then now I do like the farmer's market book signings and some craft show book signings as well. Oh, awesome. Did you find that once it was published that you were depleted of energy and you didn't want to promote or did you have stamina to get through that? I think I had some stamina afterwards just because I had a grace period while waiting for Amazon to get back to me. And then after that, I felt pretty good. You know, I had a lot of energy. I was getting more sleep and I was able to promote more. Yeah. I hated the promotion period, honestly, if I'm (laughs) completely honest with you. I got to that point and I was like, yeah, I'm tired and I'm kind of done. And the publisher that I went through did like, I think it was three months of promotions for me, which was great. They got me on like a news station to promote it and got me in like another in a big publication or two. But then after that, it was all on me. And I quite honestly just didn't have the energy for it. So I kind of faded away, which is a huge regret of mine. I wish I could go back and tell myself before I even started the project, save energy for promoting because it's such a big piece of it. Do you agree with that? Do you feel oh, like yes. promoting? Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, Amazon categories and like your keywords, it does help with sales but a lot of it is self-promotion you know getting it out there like people you know and like community members and like from there on out then they can suggest it to other people and it just keeps on snowballing yeah do you have plans to make another maybe someday i kind of thought about doing lunch recipes for people who work full-time because like the concept of like freezer meal is to like if you're super busy then like you can prepare your meals ahead of time if you know that you're going to be gone every Wednesday or something, then you can have a meal ready for your Wednesday. And like, I think people Ooh, I really that. struggle with eating out with lunch every day at work because it's just easy. So that'd be yeah. my other idea if I were ever, ever to do it again. And if you could go back before you started this project, what things or thing would you change? I think I would change maybe different fonts. I kind of like chose one of the more standard fonts and maybe to make it more unique or to match my website better I could have done a similar font okay that's interesting yeah and how did you choose your fonts on the book because I was doing it in such, such a short amount of time I kind of did it one of the top recommended fonts but they were actually called very different things and like they'd be called in like word so I want to say it like the fonts called like stony brook or something Oh, yeah. Just looking through your, you can do like the look, look at your book now or whatever it's called on Amazon. Yeah. I'm just looking through. I saw the, I see the triangles that you were talking about that line up, I'm assuming, the like the yellow triangle that comes in from the side. Is that you, what you were saying about lining those up? Yeah. Okay. Very cool. These recipes look amazing. I can't wait to get it and check it out. So if you're listening, go check out Tyann's book and... If you are into freezer meals or if you know someone who is, 
support her in that way. Do you have any other words of advice for people who want to publish and want to go this route and maybe are intimidated by the process or are holding off? What advice do you have for them? I'd say just start because there are days where after I started, I would be thinking, you know, like, do I really want to go through with this? Like, this is like day seven of working 14 hour days. But in the end, I was kind of thinking, you know, like you, you had a goal, you know, like think about like why you want to accomplish this goal. It has to be, you have to be in it for more than the money. You have to be more in it for helping others because that's what will push you forward. And, you know, yeah. just starting is the most important things because not many people can say, oh, I, I wrote a book. Like if you walk into a party, how many other people are going to actually have a book out there too? You know, it's quite an accomplishment to get it published and to actually begin the process. It is. It's a lot of work from start to finish. Oh my goodness. But if you, yeah, it's like Sally Eckes, she's a literary agent for the Eckes Group. And she always says this and I love it. A cookbook isn't going to make you a ton of money, but it can be like a big, beautiful business card, which I love. It's like the most impressive thing that you can hand to somebody. Like I did this. I put on put in all the work, blood, sweat, and tears and all. And that is pretty cool. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So cool. Well, good for you. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, this is a huge accomplishment, especially your time frame and all you did in such a short time. It's so impressive. And I know everybody listening is gonna be like, wow, she's amazing. And you probably will set into motion some goals for other people. Do you believe that this is a huge stepping stone for your business? I definitely think so because, you know, liking to cook is one thing. You know, bringing a baked good somewhere is another thing. Having a blog is something completely different. But on top of that, I also have a book, which kind of like sets me apart from the crowd, I think. Oh, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Would you ever go the traditional route, publishing? Yeah, I have con- considered that. I haven't really thought about it, you know, since making this one. But I do think that there are pros and cons to both traditional and self-publishing. I think with traditional publishing, you don't have to do as much research, but you do get more say, I think, and like what the inside contents look like. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Tayan. Is there anything we missed? Oh, the Amazon categories. When uploading to Amazon, you can actually choose up to 10 categories if you call them and not just the three that they give you for options. Oh, good to know. Okay. What did you choose as your categories? I don't have off the top of my head, but I think one of them is like cooking and preservation, easy meals, American Midwest cooking, cooking with kids, cooking meats, natural cooking. So you made sure to fill in all 10. Yeah. The more categories, the better. There's like another program you can like run categories through online and it'll tell you how many you have to sell in a day to be the number one category. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know about that. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Thank you for mentioning that. Well, thank you for being here. I so appreciate your time. This was so valuable, Tayan. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Do you have either a favorite quote or words of inspiration to leave us with today? Uh, I think the one of my words of inspiration is like grateful for the opportunity. You know, like pub- self publishing a book in 2021 was completely different than if I would have been born a decade sooner and tried to do it, say, in like 2011. Like, there's so many more opportunities nowadays on research and how to do things. And, you know, back in 2011, I wouldn't have been taking photos on my phone. Like I would have had to go develop them somewhere. So I really think that like with time, you know, being grateful for opportunities and how things evolve is very important. Oh, such a great attitude to have. And like in any aspect of our businesses and lives, but I love how you applied it to this. Like be grateful for the advancements, right? Yes, and how yes. easy, like really easy it is. So I, side note, published an ebook back in like 2011 when I was first really? blogging. Wow. It was hard. It was I'm not sure easy was, back yeah. then. I remember having to jump through all of these weird hoops just to get the ebook on Amazon. And it was, it was insane. And I was like, this is crazy. I will never do this again. But now I'm sure it's way different. I'm sure it's like way more streamlined, just like self-publishing a hard cover book. So yeah, 
grateful for those advancements for sure. I will put together a show notes page for you, Tyann. So if anyone wants to peek at those and everything we've talked about today will be in there. You can go to eblogtalk.com forward slash cooking with Tyann and Tyann is T-Y-A-N-N-E. Tell everyone where they can find you online and social media and also just reiterate what your book title is and where people can find it. You can find me online at my blog, www.cookingwithtyann.com. I'm also on Instagram and Facebook at Cooking with Tyann. And my book is called Deliciously Fresh Freezer Meals. Right now, I have it at a discount on Amazon since it is right around the same time period as I launched last year. So for a little launch anniversary, it is discounted right now if you want to go check it out there. Awesome. Well, thank you so much again, Tyann, for being here. And thank you for listening today, food bloggers. I will see you in the next episode. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Eat Blog Talk. Please share this episode with a friend who would benefit from tuning in. I will see you next time.